Hey there, and welcome to You Talk. We connect with extraordinary people across Canada and ask them about their stories, passions, and experiences. I'm your host, Ryan Funk. Winnipeg got a special visitor this February with a visit from the Swedish ambassador to Canada, Urban Allen. Before Ambassador Urban took a trip with some kick sleds onto the Red River, he shared how Sweden uses these sleds and his experience visiting Ottawa. You go out with the ice and you sit in the front and you're kind of fishing. Uh -huh. uh, so that's what we use it for more uh, because we don't have so much snow on the streets. Right. You know, it's, it's not as cold as here okay. in the middle of Sweden. Uh -huh. uh, so people use it when they go out fishing. But in the northern part of Sweden, they do it, you know, for doing the grocery, they go on the, on the walkways, they use it for there because, you know, and lots of old people are using it because it's convenient, right? You, you'd use it. And when you want to take a rest, you just sit on the bench. And when you have a shop, you just put your groceries in there and you, you kick your way home. Right. You know, so it's yeah. actually pretty convenient. And but it's a little bit different using like different parts of it. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's these a uh, are a bit of a newer addition to, to Winnipeg. There has been a ton of uh, companies bringing them yeah. to town. Um, why do you think it's a good, I guess, mode of transportation or activity during the winter? I think it speaks for itself. You know, it's made for winter. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. You know, and it's 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 actually pretty fun to, to ride as well. Let's just see if I can get this on. No, it's uh, it's fun. Uh, and as you see, there are different versions. As you can see here, this one has kind of more skis on it. Mm -hmm. See, it's more for the soft snow. You know, that is not that common in Sweden. No. Okay. I mean, what we have are these kind of uh, skates, what do you call it? I don't know, media, that we say in Sweden, I don't know. Okay. You know, when it's an iron, uh, like on a, under a skate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we use most of the time. But um, uh, but I think that that's a good idea, though, for, for more softer snow. You know? do you, what do you think of uh, these? Do you think these kinds of activities should be adopted more in a city like Winnipeg, where winter is such a big part of our year? I, think, I mean, it's, it's up to the people in Winnipeg to decide <laughs> what kind of means of transport they would like to use. Yeah. But, I mean, for when we're talking about uh, environmental issues, you know, uh, we want to be climate friendly. This is a very climate friendly means of transportation, right? Mm -hmm. And as I said, it's, it's, you can use it for lots of different reasons. Uh, if you go out ice fishing, it's perfect because it goes fast, uh -huh. you know. And as I said, uh, lots of older people back home is, is really using it when they go grocery. Because, you know, they, they can sit down and have a rest. So it's, it depends on what you, you can find a lot of different purpose of having it. So I'm not saying that, you know, Winnipeg should buy a thousand of these and take away the buses or something like that. I don't think that's possible. But it is definitely a need for for different means of transportation, whatever you, you do. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious what you've noticed um, difference-wise between, say, Sweden and Canada when it comes to approaching winter and being outside in the winter. First of all, you know, it's... it's uh, I mean, when Canadians look at Sweden, they see a country that is very far up north, okay? But, you know, the reality is that we don't have the harsh winters as you have here in Winnipeg. You really need to go up north, really up north in Sweden to have this kind of cold weather as we have today. Where I come from, you know, this, this, I mean, maybe one day in winter we have this kind of cold that you have today. So it, it's, it's a different kind of climate and, and lots of Canadians don't understand that. But the Gulf Stream and the Atlantic, you know, is warming up the Scandinavian Peninsula. So Norway and Sweden is much warmer than Canada, even though we are much more north. So it, it's a different kind of uh, setting, you know. And it, it's the same when we had a meeting yesterday, we talked about the Arctic. And Canadians believe that the Arctic in the north, in the Nordic country, it looks like the Arctic here. And it doesn't, you know. The northern part of Sweden, the Arctic part of Sweden is, is more like Winnipeg, you know. There, there are cities, there are railway stations, there are communications, there are roads, there are activities going on, right? So it's more like a simple part of, an ordinary part of Sweden. Uh, so it's as simple as that. It's, it's, it's not a big difference. So, um, I think, you know, Canadians can talk Swedes a lot about how to handle cold weather because you have a much colder weather than we have. Uh, and, you know, so I don't think Swedes are special experts when it comes to handling the winter. No, mm -hmm. I don't think so. But it's good to have an exchange of views and, you know, see different kind of cultures and how you deal with stuff. 
um, I thought it was fun to come to, to Ottawa and, and learn how to dress properly when it's pretty cold outside. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a new experience as well. So th that's good. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And what kinds of things, being in Winnipeg, what kinds of things are you learning we had we the Nordic ambassadors were here for a meeting with you know the premier and, and ministers and so on and what we have been talking about is the kind of cooperation where we can have a cooperation between Manitoba and the Nordic countries so yesterday we spoke a lot about mining how to make it more sustainable more green using uh, you know electrical uh, machineries in the mines having more social inclusion into the mining and, and in these areas there are lots of commonalities between Sweden and Manitoba we have the, kind of the same challenges so I think there are lots of opportunities where we actually the Nordic countries and Manitoba can work together when it comes to that. The fun thing with the Kickstarter is though that when I grow up, everyone had this, you know. So I have three of my own back home in my boathouse. So it's parked there. Uh, so I have three of them. And then for, you know, uh, because we had it like you have here in Winnipeg that, you know, the, the walkways have snow, right? So it's easy to ride the Kickstarter. And then we started using more of salt in the walkways. Mm -hmm. And when you have salt and you have a concrete or asphalt, you can't really use them. So for a period of time, it went away. But nowadays, it's more environmental friendly again. We're using less salt. And, and then the kickstays is coming back again into the Swedish kind of, what do you call it, um, you know, tradition to use it. So uh, I think that that's a little bit a part of the story, you know, that it's a kind of, we are reinventing them again, so to say, right? If you ask me 20 years ago, will we ever have kickstays again? I would say, no, that, that was in the 60s. You know. But it, it's coming back again. Right. Due to due to that. Yeah, and the point about the infrastructure is interesting, obviously, because yeah. we have like a range of different roadways and, oh, and yeah. things like that. And yeah, 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 yeah. Sure And you know, it, it, it and it's also an important thing is here that maybe we have a little bit of different approach to flowing streets and so. Uh, you know, we have uh, what do you call that uh, studded uh, tires. You know, so we are not. I mean, where I where I am here in Canada in Ottawa, they pour out salt. So the, the roads are totally empty of ice, right? In Sweden, you don't have that. So we have studded tires. Uh, we, we tell people, you need to drive carefully because it's winter conditions, right? Um, and that, that is an environmental thing. You know, we... I would say that the voters in Sweden would not accept pouring out so much salt on the street as you do here in Canada. I think there would be a lot of criticism against that, right? So, so we, we really you know, tell people that it's your responsibility, you need to drive carefully during the winter. Uh, but we also, the first thing we plow is actually the walkways. Because we look upon it from a perspective that the kids need to go to school. And, uh, you know, we, we need to look to other things than the cars need. So in many countries you look at, oh, the need for the car, you plow the roads first and then you do the rest, right? But actually in Sweden it's more focusing on we want the people to use the walkways, they need to go to the work, so we fix that. And in Stockholm they even call it a feministic snow plowing policy, where they are you know, looking into who is benefiting from plowing the roads, mostly men, uh, plowing the walkways, mostly women. So they, they even call it you know, a feministic snow plowing policy that they do that first. And then of course then if you snow plow the, the walkways, then it's a good idea to have kickstays. Right, exactly. That fits yeah. into it. Yeah, because you will have it like here, you know, easy to, to go. Yeah. 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 But it's it's a wonderful uh, means of transportation, I would say, for older people. You know, it's not I mean in the downtown of Stockholm you won't find this. But in the in the, in the countryside, in smaller cities, let's say one hundred thousand and below, uh, you will find people using this all the time when they go to the grocery store. And it's as I said, old people love it because they have the chair with them, right? So easy to skate, sit down, have a rest, get your grocery on, and, you know, go and, home. And we're here with the Scandinavian Culture Center. Uh, I guess, what are your thoughts on you know having a, a community center like this in Winnipeg that celebrates all the Nordic countries? Oh, I love it! I love it because you know the Nordic ambassadors back home in Ottawa. I mean, we have five: it's Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark, and we work very closely together. Uh, because we know that we are small countries, right? Sweden is 10 million people, the others are five and a half and so on. And to make an impact in Canada and making us known, 
it's actually better that we work together. So if we come together, we can have a bigger impact, right? And that's the same with our visit here. I mean, if I go here I'm alone, uh, maybe I wouldn't have a meeting with the Premier, right? But if I go with my Nordic colleagues, it's a better chance that we have good meetings. Uh, so we, we try to do that all the time. And, you know, coming here where you have lots of... I mean, Winnipeg was once upon a time the Swedish capital in Canada, right? <laughs> Wherever you go, you have... You hear Icelandic names and Norwegians names and so on. So that the kind of the Nordic, what do you call it, mark here is pretty obvious. <laughs> it's pretty obvious, I would say. If you have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight, leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was You Talk, and have yourself a good one.